Hey, everybody, we're back. It's the anime podcast. Season two, episode one. This is actually episode 28. Uh, that's what I'm going to put in the title of the video, at least. Okay. We're, we're back. We got burned out on anime last time, but Mob Psycho 102, or Mob Psycho 200, or 101, whatever you, you want to call it, if you have a cute name for it, it's back on the air, and we both like that show a lot. So this is an excuse to talk about it, and also watch other cartoons. And see if any of them are as good as Mob this season. Oh, uh, well, that's... For me, that's definitely a no, Uh, but we'll get into that because we are going to rank all these series one through nine. We've got nine anime or we have eight anime and and one Western cartoon, which we'll save for last for for those of you who are like autistic purists. Uh, Weren't you one of them? I had to convince you to watch this show. I mean, I I recognize value in, in animated productions that are not from the country of Nippon. (laughs) So I'm... I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not that crazy or obsessed, um, but some people are. So we'll you know we'll save it for last to avoid triggering any any spurgs out there. Cool. So uh, what are we gonna what are we gonna start with this time? Um, that's a good question. We got we got six of like the most buzzed about shows of the season. A couple that not a lot of people are talking about. Uh. For good reason, perhaps. Yes. And then Castlevania, the the Netflix series, is the other one that we're we're gonna discuss. So it's like winter 2018, 2019 first impressions. Because we got a new season. And then uh And Castlevania's like, there too. Yeah. Grunchler really wanted to watch Castlevania, and I'm Whooper. Uh, your host for today, I guess. Hosts. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, I was just thinking we might start with like Boogie Pop because it's first alphabetically. Okay, sure. So that's a uh, boogie pop wa wada wanai, or boogie pop never laughs. Is that is that the translation? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, didn't... I, I think yes. <laughs> Close enough. Well, I mean, that was the name of the series that aired 19 years ago uh, at the the start of the millennium. Is because, this a remake? No, it's not a remake. That's the thing. Like the source material is a is a series of light novels, and the first anime series that. Um, that aired in 2000 was actually like original material um, that was based on the universe of light novels, but was not, you know, based on any story in particular that could be found in, in those books. But this is a more, uh, this is an adaptation actually of the novels. Okay. Um, so, so it's more true to this. It's like, it's like we're watching brotherhood instead of the original full metal alchemist. Uh, okay. More true to the source material. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can appreciate that as a as a reference that most people will understand. I don't know if it's there's a clear parallel there, but that's that's pretty good. I tried. What What did you think of this show? I think the show is confused. <laughs> yeah, that seems to have been the the general reaction to it. The show doesn't know what its overall theme is. It doesn't know if it's trying to make some sort of commentary on people's mental or social states or if it's trying to be in love story or what at some point based on the intro apparently it's going to be an action show so who knows what's going to happen now a love story where did you get love story from the the main characters are dating who what no they're not dating each other they're just dating which is a violation of their school's policy like you you're not allowed to be right but they they are dating yeah but i didn't i didn't think of this that's really weird that you would think that this episode had like a romantic slant to it even a little bit because they they're not going out with each other we don't see the people that they're interested in hardly any of the dialogue revolves around the fact that they're romantically involved except like the last minute of the show Really? When he's talking to Boogie Pop on the on the roof? No, after they leave and they meet the girl that is like assumed to be the murderer in the school. Yeah, the tall girl. Yeah. They meet her. They they're both leaving together because she's regained her mental state. She's like, Where were you? And he's like, Oh, I was meeting my weird friend up on the roof. Um, he's kind of weird. Ha <laughs> ha, whatever, let's go. And he runs into he runs into that other girl who's name is inconsequential and it just says i'm gonna let you guys off with a warning because you're not supposed to be dating with each other but you're my friends 
Okay. It's, it's ex- like explicitly mentioned. Yeah, but I don't think that's the focus. The the it's difficult to know what the focus is to be fair because I mean the first episode is mostly just a, a collection of conversations between uh the main character guy whose name I've forgotten. Did it uh KG is it KG? K- KG? Okay. K E I G I. Okay. Uh yeah, him and Boogie Pop. I mean the it's that seem that to me the the episode is just centered centered around them talking to one another about the stuff that's going on in the city. You know what I mean? Like did you did you catch that there were quick cuts to like the little uh like the violence that was that was going on like the the, the girls that were being killed yeah 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 and it all disappeared from that school yeah yeah i have a theory on why that's happening and who is doing it already yes okay because i think it's already been foreshadowed and i think i'm probably right okay well what's your theory it's it's that tall girl you meet at the end yeah well i would hardly even call that foreshadowing that was like a neon sign above her head i thought your prediction was going to be like no, I think super she's the one who's killed all those girls I mean the show practically tells us that she was the one who did it I know and it's terrible <laughs> well I, I don't that's that's who's the most like a murderer in this school yeah well that the thing about that is that apparently that girl um, her family is involved in the police force or criminal psychology or something so that's the reason they would ask her but right. you, I don't think you get that from this episode and I think that there's maybe like a couple snippets of dialogue because they say why they ask her, but I don't entirely remember it. Yeah, well, it's it's hard to know. It's hard to know um, the characters' relationships to one another or what they know or realize about each other because the story is told kind of like out of order. There are jumps between... And we're 20 minutes in. Yeah, but I mean, the original Boogie Pop was like that too. It was very... Um, well, it, it was more like moody and atmospheric and kind of complicated and hard to follow. This one is lighter, but it has the same kind of thing going on. Like it's it's not it's not being told completely linearly, or rather there are gaps in its linear story. And that's hard to know without ha- having done a little Googling or research or knowing something about the source material. Um but as far as what we got for the first episode, I thought it was okay. It certainly wasn't that well produced. Um, I like the music. Yeah, dude. the The music is by guess yeah. who? Guess who is by? Um, Yoko Kano. No, that's the only Japanese composer I really know. Kensuke Ushio, the guy who did the music for Devilman Crybaby, Ping really? Pong, that movie we went to see in the theater, Liz and the Blue Bird. Okay, remember how Liz and the Blue Bird opened with like that really long. Um, musical piece where the characters are just walking to it, like the girls walking down the hallway and her ponytails swaying back and forth. Right. Yeah. That he composed that too. Oh, okay. Um. So yeah, yeah. The music, it the music is like in in this show, it's like droning kind of, and it has like a warm tone to it. It really it, when they're talking about like all the the weird things that are happening around the city and the reason she shows up and stuff. It. It adds to the layer of intrigue that they're trying to portray through the dialogue without like it being just like blaring eerie strings in your ears. Yeah. It's like these subtle like piano. It's this subtle piano with like a nice with a pad underneath it or a synth underneath it. It's it's cool. I liked it. Yeah, the music was one of my favorite things about it, but I just love everything that uh, that dude does. Um, probably because he works with Yuasa so often. Um, but he's apparently he's branching out, so that's that's good, I guess. Um, I also thought it was kind of neat that most of the scenes were set at a certain time of day, like as the sun was beginning to go down, but it wasn't quite twilight because it kind of um, bathed everything in like a amber glow. Yeah, but not not even not even that far. It was just like beginning, and it was appropriate because this is the first episode. This it's you know we're just beginning as audience members to understand what's what the show is about and who the characters are. So I have, I mean, my guess is that as the series goes on, it's going to get closer and closer to nighttime. Like we might get more and more of an amber glow, more of a, more of a twilight feel, more of a sunset feel as we go on. 
because and the reason I think they might go in that direction is because such careful attention was paid to, um, you know, the hue of the show in the first episode, which, which was a nice touch. Um, okay. but like as far as animation goes or character designs, did you, have you seen Parasite? Yeah. Did I've you seen Parasite? Did you notice that a lot of the characters in this series looked like the characters from Parasite? Like kind of nondescript and... Is it the same studio? Um, I don't remember who did Parasite. This is Madhouse, but more important than the studio Parasite is like the actual... Madhouse. Was it? Reverse that. Madhouse did Parasite, I'm pretty sure. More important than the studio is the character designer. And uh, I would bet anything that they had the same character designer. It They just looked like... Uh, I wasn't really a fan of their designs. I Except thought, Boogie Pops, I guess. I thought they all looked distinct at the very least. They didn't suffer like the uh they didn't suffer the A1 picture syndrome. What would just like hair swaps? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this isn't that kind of show. Although I guess it could have turned into one if they hadn't uh you know, done their due diligence. Still, I don't I didn't really think they looked great. Okay. You have anything else to uh how long we over here, I have to pull up Audacity to see yeah, how long we spent fine. talking about one show. Oh God, we're at 11 minutes. I guess that's okay. You have anything else you want to say about uh, Boogie Pop? Wa Wadawa Nai? Um, just a minor thing. I thought it was weird that Keji seemed to have such a strong attachment to Boogie Pop so quickly. Like she's like, I'm about to go. I'm no longer needed after the girl's gone. And he's like screaming after her. No, you should stay. Why are you going? Well, for one thing, Boogie Pop is the alternate, al- the alter ego of the, you know. Right, of the, of, girl. of the girl he likes. Yeah, but also, um, that's, from what I understand, there's a, there's a, there, there are big, hello, there are big time skips between a bunch of these conversations. I think you can. And the s- one at the end is like the end of the story, pretty much. I think it's over like four or five days because that's how many different times they're on the rooftop. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, assume that each each uh, new scene is a new day. It might be like a new week. Or... I, I do because they show multiple times where he's on the roof and she's not there. Almost as to establish he's gone up the next day to look for her and she's not there. Well, why do you assume that it's a day rather than a week? A school day. You know, you go to talk to your friends after school. You don't do it once a week. You do it every day. I know, but a story such as a film or a television show might choose not to depict every day on screen. That's that's true. I just, I think it was only over like a week. Okay. I don't think it was like this extended period of time. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it was and maybe it wasn't, but either way, I thought it, I thought it was weird. And if it happened to be multiple weeks, then I'm probably wrong. I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a boogie pop aficionado. Like I haven't read the light novels. I didn't, <laughs> reading a light novel in 2019 <laughs> uh not not for me what did, how what so we're gonna like rate everything out of nine yeah uh, because we're doing we're talking about nine shows so one being the best mm-hmm. is that yeah, yeah that's okay. that's how i ranked it what what did where'd you put it man six all right looks like i put it seventh so we got an average of six and a half out of nine here cool What's next? Uh, you can we, pick, or we can go down the do order. Dororo, Dororo, Dororo. Dororo. Right. Is it is that anything like Bo Bo Bo? No, it's much shorter. In fact, um, yeah, we can do this one. That'd be that'd be fine. Did you like it? Yeah. Did you hate it? What would you rate it? I liked. It. <laughs> Thanks, Cal. Um, no, I liked it. I thought I thought the setup was pretty generic. It's the Lord sacrifices something to gain power and it goes different than he expected, but he's still like, Yay, I've gained power. I'm evil man. Well the maybe the reason you think it's generic is because this is based on a manga that's like fifty years old. So everything has copied its formula. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean it's by Tezuka, who was one of the most influential mangaka ever. Uh and in fact there was uh, an anime adaptation in 1969, actually 50 years ago. So the manga is probably a little bit older. And I watched the first episode of the 1969 one just because I was curious to compare it to this. Uh, yeah, to compare it, but 
Um, More just to see what it was like. Yeah, pretty much. Like I, I don't feel the need to pit them against each other. I was, I was just kind of curious because I was a little disappointed with this. Actually, that might be part of the reason why I looked it up. Okay, so maybe that explains the feeling that you're getting. Like this has all been done before. It's, it's literally been done before. Okay. So if you thought it was kind of a, a, a generic setup, then what was it that you liked about it? Um, I liked the idea of the essentially head child or the shrunken head. Yeah, that was creepy. Uh, becoming or like almost exerting a will to live that the that the grandmother was able to see. And basically she Jesuses it away in a boat. I think you mean Moseses. <laughs> yeah, I meant Moses. <laughs> They're both Jesus people. Uh-huh. Well, um, Jesus, Jesus wasn't, uh, he wasn't a thing yet in Moses' time. It's true. It was a couple <laughs> hundred years earlier. Whatever. Anyways, his story doesn't matter. Um, but so she Moseses him away and he obviously gets picked up by that guru that kills the ghoul at the start and is probably like trained by him or something. Perhaps. Yeah. But I like, we, we don't see that for sure. And we also know that, um, it's it's not just that guy who who could have had a, a role in his upbringing, but also the traveling mask guy. Yeah, the guy who attaches limbs to the deceased to make their bodies whole in the afterlife. Yeah. Obviously, since uh, Kyakimaru has those, those limbs. Um, and he says he's putting prototypes on the bodies. So the actual versions are on him. These are all like the failed designs that didn't fit. Right, right, right. That'd be a guess. But I like the character... Dororo? Dororo. The little kid? I liked his design. I thought he looked, you know, different enough from the rest of the characters, even though we did see a few other kids, that he kind of stood out. It kind of reminded me of, like, Konohamaru. (laughs) Okay. Which may not be a good comparison, depending on who you are. Uh, I mean, I, I guess that makes sense. I can't I can't really remember that much about what Naruto characters look like. I mean, I can for some of them. I seem to remember that Konohamaru had different looking eyes than everyone else. Is yeah. That, is that right? He was I mean, there were only like three prominent children in all of Naruto. Konohamaru All of the main characters were children. I mean like small children. Okay. Like Konohamaru and his two gang members. Right. Anyways. Uh I liked him. Uh-huh. I liked his I liked his character and I don't know if I just want to like summarize this as quickly as possible. I thought the I thought the fight between did we ever Chakimaru. Chakimaru. The 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 traveling mask dude and artificial limb guy. Uh he he says his name at the very end while he's looking at someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't make that connection. I thought that the fight between it and the sludge was really cool the river monster guy yeah, yeah. it reminded me of um no face no not no face the the spirit and spirited away like the spirit of the river who had been polluted and who came into the bathhouse oh okay which you know was which was no face but no, when was he was it? still covered it was like in... a it was like a dragon dude oh but he was right. totally covered in that sludge okay yeah yeah that yeah. wasn't no face i got that backwards um that's a that, that's a, that's a one anime sin for me, not remembering a Spirited Away character. If you get to three, then we're canceled again. If I get to three, I have to watch Shippuden without sp- sp- skipping the filler. <laughs> Think of the millions of people who have already done that. <laughs> Punishment enough. Yeah, this... Um, I guess it was kind of ambiguous as to what um, Hyakimaru's name was, because we didn't... We didn't see the the artificial limb dude. I keep calling him that. I wish I knew his name. Um, we didn't see him and Hyakimaru together in the same scene. Uh, in, in the first episode of the 69 series, there's a next episode preview that makes it super clear what their relationship was. Okay, I don't... I don't so we, my guess is that we'll probably get some backstory in, the, in episode two of this series, which is already out. I don't generally watch... Um... Next time on do 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 Yeah, I don't I don't watch those just out of habit. Right. Uh, okay, well, 
So, so you so, so you liked well, it in general? Yeah, I liked it in general. I thought that thought the ending fight looked good. I thought the premise of essentially what is a shrunken head that now has limbs and the way that he fights having to like hold things and like he has sword arms and stuff yeah. like that. It's he has to be completely different in order to function like the rest of us. Um I thought that was really cool. I liked Dororo. Uh, the, the character the, the character like the annoying bratty kid you like that yeah, character i thought so i'm just i mean that's not a wrong opinion to have or anything i'm just kind of surprised that you that you liked him yeah i can i can see why you'd be surprised but yeah i just i liked the show overall i thought the setup was a little bit generic but i thought it did pretty well uh afterwards cool so what didn't you like about it um some of the art and the animation okay like the as you as you mentioned, the fight of the river was pretty. I think I thought the choreography was better than the actual execution and animation of that fight. Like the the scene where he dips down through the hole in the bridge and comes down on the support poles and starts slashing them apart in order to sink the monster. That was really uh you know the design of that fight, the way it's laid out, is really cool, and it it looks pretty good, especially for modern anime, uh, which are you know. This series is going to be too core, so they've they've got to you know spread their spread out their money and their time and their talent wisely, so they can't concentrate it too hard in any one place. So I mean, I I don't feel as though we're going to get a lot of really spectacular looking fights or anything, but it did look okay. You know, it looked pretty good. This is but is this their second or third show? What are you talking about? The studio they did it, Mappa. Oh no, Mappa's been really really um, prolific for years now. Oh really? Yeah, they are a news studio as of this decade. They're a Madhouse spinoff. I thought the first thing we saw from them was uh, Kokoku. That was Geno Studio. But what what show have, did we watch last time that had that motorcycle intro? To it's it? it's the same intro. Mappa, uh, Geno Studio, and there's another studio too, um, Studio Voln. They're all part of Twin Engine Productions. Okay. Um. Learning and new there's, things. There's there's Madhouse staff that have kind of moved into different positions at all three of those places. But the my like my main issue was actually not that I went on a tangent talking about the you know the river fight because that is like the big set piece of the episode. But all this all a lot of the character animation I thought was really bad. Like the moment when um uh Kakimaru as a baby as that creepy looking you know, fetus blood thing, thing yeah is is taken away from her after she's given birth to it and the mother reaches out her arms to get the baby back it just looks like this <laughs> it's like two frames one with her left arm raised and one with her right arm raised and it just you know oscillates back and forth between the two oscillates might not be the right word there but moves it's really it's really a pitiful scene um at when it should be like heart-wrenching when you consider, I mean, she's not one of the main characters, or I don't assume that she's set up to be one of them. But, um, well, you the see, show, her, like, you see her again. shits on the the emotion of a mother like trying desperately to reclaim her her newly born son who is about to be shipped off to die. I don't think that's supposed to be the focal emotion of the scene, though. But it should be. It should be. Yes, I think it's. I think it's focusing more on like the father's lust for power and you're not you're supposed to be disgusted with that which in turn it makes you be like he's just getting rid of this small child yeah that's what he's doing that's what he's doing head. that's what he's doing and a way to emphasize that that's terrible is to make you feel the pain of the woman who just gave birth to him that's like a <laughs> to me that just made me sad to see that kind of that kind of uh then didn't they technically achieve their objective? No, it made me it made me <laughs> it made me sad at like how lousy an effort it was. You know, like somebody okayed those those scenes. It's like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm sure you know directors of anime series are they're all like in crunch crunch mode all the time. You know, it's probably like production hell, but it was still you know really shoddy work. And everything with the midwife, the old woman, uh, she just, she looked terrible the way that she walked. She moved like slow and clunky, but well, not so and clunky like an, like old, an old person, person moves, walks. but a slow and clunky like 
uh, two children sitting on each other's clothes trying to uh, impersonate a larger person. What? <laughs> you ever seen like a kid sit on another kid's shoulders and try to like impersonate someone who's tall? They, just, um, they try to pass I've probably them, seen that in another cartoon. Yeah, they've tried to pass themselves on an adult and they move clunky. That's what it I see. That's what it looked like. Okay. <laughs> uh in trying to recall the the way she was animated, I really can't say that I <laughs> that that uh, is an appropriate description for me, but <laughs> it it certainly didn't look the way that I thought it needed to look. I I don't know. And a lot of the backgrounds I didn't like too much either, but we're already you know like running over. Yeah. On this, on this. So show. let's uh, let's figure out where we placed it. Okay, uh, I put it fourth. I put it fourth. Nice. Well, only the top three of these series are going to move into our, you know, our seasonal coverage. Down from four when we did the podcast previously, because that just lessens the workload a little bit, and we'll hopefully be able to keep everything within an hour. Right. My goal. This episode. Might not be. Yeah, we we actually need to speed things up a little bit, maybe. So let's talk about... Oh, whoops, I wrote that in the wrong thing. Let's talk about uh, Dimension High School, which we, we we decided to watch after, you know, flipping through Annie chart, seeing what was going to come out the start of January. It looked just god-awful. And, and guess what? It was. Yeah, we decided to watch it because it might be... It might be hilarious. It was, it was kind of funny. I, I got to chuckle out of it but you didn't get a chuckle out of it for the fact that it was funny you got a chuckle out of it for the fact that it was so terrible it was funny yeah i mean so bad it's good I, that's when you're watching anime that's a valid <laughs> that's a valid way to approach things i guess and uh it was, <laughs> it was awesome did you notice how it was pretty obvious that uh, in the live action scenes that they had redubbed their lines. They weren't recorded no. in that room. Really? Yes. No, I didn't notice that at all. Oh, yeah. Because like the one or two times you hear audio from the room, it sounds awful. Like when the desk starts clattering, it's like echoey and boxy and it's just awful. And then it switches back to the ADR and it sounds just like every other regular anime does. Huh. They didn't use location audio at all. Wow. In fact, this no, whole thing looks like it that. was shot on someone's iPhone. It, well, I, I think that's just how, how the Japanese film things. That's the, the sort of camera. It looks kind of like a soap opera. No, I mean, I mean not just like, not just the frame rate. No, but, I'm not talking about the, the frame rate. I'm, well, I mean, maybe I am in part. I don't know. I'm not a, anyways, a technical it, anyways, expert. Anyways, it looked terrible. <laughs> Okay. Even the live action stuff, it I mean, it literally looked like someone shot it on an iPhone <laughs> or whatever great I'll Japanese phone there is. I'll take you. I'll take your word for it. Spudio the twenty second. Is that the name of the talking meteorite that <laughs> yes. transports them to the to the two and a half D world? Yes. Where they take that quiz <laughs> from the Sphinx that laser beams someone and eats his soul. Yeah. That was. Uh, if that's not, you know. A good enough description to convince you to watch this then i don't know what's wrong with you also did it seem like the cg that it looked like these guys were just playing vr chat and someone filmed it yeah you you mean kind of the way that they they didn't really collide with the environment properly yeah it was it was some of the worst cg i've ever seen and animes had plenty of bad cg in it i actually think that may have been filmed with like vr chat or something perhaps because the like it was it was obviously motion capture of some sort, but it wasn't touched up by an artist at all. It could have been. You put a couple reference points. Because notice how their hands never did anything but a single position. Yeah, and they like collided awkwardly with with flat surfaces. Yes, didn't move along. Like one, the one guy runs at the door and is like thunder charge or something stupid, and it literally just looks like he's <laughs> physically repelled from the wall. There's yeah. no sense of weight. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, the Sphinx Paramesos. He ate someone with his laser beam eyes and said that he tasted like, I think it was squid or something. Okay, well, I'm glad that you wrote down all these details because I, having watched it like a week ago or so, all I have is a is a vague memory of 
how funny it was. Like, do you do do you remember when he the the first scene is like live action and it's the main character guy um, just walking to school and he passes a rock and he comes back and looks at it and he's like, "This is a nice rock." <laughs> <laughs> he goes up to it. He's like, "Is this a meteorite? Nah, it's just a normal rock." I'm going to school, going to school. You know what? That rock was dope. I'm going to go back and get it. <laughs> so our our first introduction, not only to the series, but to this character is, I mean, he likes rocks. What, what worse way could there possibly be to, uh, to, to tell us anything about who he is? Like, I don't know, that he's just a, a nerd who is more interested in stones than human beings. I guess. I guess in fairness, there are, there are lots of anime that are made every year about people exactly like that. Also, were the subs in the middle of the screen sometimes for well, you? Yeah. That's just what happens when, um, horrible subs. Cause they pull from all over the place, like Crunchyroll, Amazon. Yeah. Right. Netflix, whatever they can cases. get it from. Yeah. When they get it from, um, Sentai Filmworks, I think. It does that. Whenever there are, there are two lines of dialogue, um, like two people are speaking at the same time, and one of the lines is is two or more, like they hit enter or, or whatever. Right. It just shifts into the middle. Yeah. Like in those specific instances, it moves to the center of the screen, which is really annoying. Um, so hopefully it doesn't happen. Do you remember the consequence yeah. for the professor after he died when he came back to the real world? Yeah, the thing that was most precious to him, he had to lose. Yes. That was my favorite moment of the whole episode. His freak out. Um, that's pull, that's just classic out, Japanese acting. He pulls acting. out his phone and opens up like some... like Date raid. Some mobile... Have, yes, some date raid. It's what I have right here. Yeah, and he loses all his points and he just like... He loses his shit and just like starts w running all over the desks looking for the rock. Oh, is that what he was doing? Yeah, he was like, I'm gonna find that rock and grind it into dust. I thought he was just, he had just lost his mind and ran out of the classroom in a panic. He was looking for the rock. And the guy who was like so obsessed with the teacher was like distraught at seeing him act that way. He was, <laughs> he got pushed back and he like fell on the ground and he, he like, had that Don't dumb help me struck, up. That dumbstruck expression on his face. Yeah. It was great. I think uh, so. The, the whole thing is just like educational, right? I mean, it almost seems that way. Yeah, I I think the point is like there's going to be a quiz every week, and you have to tune in to to take the quiz. There were the two characters. actual questions in this one. Yeah, the answer it, to the first one was time, and I forget the second one. I I don't remember. I dude, I can't imagine how anyone would be able to solve the the second one with like the wave patterns. Uh like condensing and expanding. <laughs> it just, it was so clumsy. I, it was, it was terrific. 10 out of 10. And if you die, a sphinx eats your soul. I mean, that's a, that's a good motivator for all the slackers and D students out there to get their act together. You know what, you know what I'm saying? A sphinx is going to pop out of the wall of your classroom, ask you a bunch of questions and eat your soul if you're wrong. But only after a talking rock. Which was, how did they animate the rock? I it was it was real. I I kind of get the sense that it was they, like a paper mache rock on a string. You yeah. couldn't see the string, and they painted a bunch of mouth mouths on it, and then like quote unquote animated it by showing different versions of it. But yeah. I kind of got the sense at times that they were using CG. I mean, they can use CG just to replace the the mouth. I suppose. How are we doing on time? It was pretty funny. My though. God. 30 minutes already for three shows. Yeah, it was it was really funny. So what position did you do did you put it in? Ninth. All right, same here, man. So that's in the last place. How sad. Uh let's talk about Kaguya Sama whatever it's called. Kaguya Sama Wakuru Kori Sedai. Yeah, the translation is uh Kaguya Sama wants to be confessed to. You got pulled up over there? Yeah, I do actually. All right, neat. I liked this this show. I did too. I thought it was pretty fun. It, it didn't take itself seriously at all. That's the thing. It it pretends to, because you've got the you've got the narrator, um, who has like a really like a kind of a, a poisonous tone to his voice, like kind of sly and sneaky, which is perfect because that's what the characters are. Do, they're like at war with one another, you know? right? Um. So you have the narrator kind of blowing things out of proportion 
Um, and the, the characters are part of the student council at, at an elite academy, you know, so the, all the material is like ready to be, to be taken too seriously, but you know, it's a fun comedy instead. Like the death note of, of, uh, romance. My favorite part of the, uh, of the show was after the first conclusion with the movie tickets, when they, when the narrator had decided that no one had won that round, He's like, wait, no, 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 no one won this round. And they redid the ending where there's like electric guitars and they're standing on like this golden pedestal and confetti starts flying everywhere. Like the ending wasn't satisfying enough, so they had to make it cooler. I actually don't remember that. It was really cool. Um, I, I vaguely remember you're talking about like a podium, right? Where people like an Olympic podium. No, it was like a, it was like words. It was like golden giant oh, yes. words that they were standing on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's true that the, the amount of, um, dialogue that the characters have with one another and the, the like the actions they take in the course of one of the little segments, cause there were like three segments in this episode is actually not that high. There's, if you were to pull out a lot of the like the flourishes that the show puts on top of what's happening you're left with something relatively simple but you know the the show spins off in a whole bunch of different directions as the two characters are like trying to get the other one to confess their love and the central monologues or the the narrator explaining what's going on in their minds for like a minute at a time right yeah the it's it's a lot of fun yeah i thought it was a i thought it was like, a fun show i like both character designs um of the, the two main, you know, the main duo. Because the, the girl, I like the fact that she has no pupils and, and her, like her red eyes seem to be kind of on fire. Like they're little licks of flames. You can kind of get an impression of that. And, and they change depending on like her current expression or emotion. Sometimes the flame will go away so that it's just like a pure red circle when she, like when she hates something that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. When she has like a, <laughs> kind of a, a loathsome expression on her face as in the the third segment when what was the the girl with the pink hair Fujiwara um when she when the president makes lunches for her and Kagi is like super jealous and starts to think of her as being like cattle right you know it's like you're not even human yeah i i'm interested in the role that Fujiwara's character or or Chika depending on like which which subs you used uh, that's her name, Fujiwara Chika. I'm interested in the role she might play in the story going forward because this is a really popular series. Like the manga that it's based on is super, it's it's huge. Okay. Um, so I'm sure that some of the people who are listening to this already know everything there is to know about the show and what her role is going to be. But I kind of, I found it that it was interesting that in all three segments, she kind of like interrupted the game that was being played between the, you know, the president and the vice president. Yeah, she so just threw a wrench in there. Yeah, so I, I mean... To me, that's foreshadowing that she might become the third point in a love triangle. Or as they introduce more characters, perhaps it'll become like a love, you know, square or whatever. Quadrilogy. Uh, that's not a shape. Quadrangle. That's not a shape either. That's a pentagon. What, what if that is, what if quadrangle actually is a real shape? Well, no, because you call it a trapezoid. Okay. I or don't a, know if we're talking about the same thing. Or a square. Um... We're talking about Kaguya. Yes. It was fun. Yeah, I thought it was a fun show. Um, the Almost the whole episode takes place in the student council room, which is entirely CG. Yeah, it seems that way. I kind of got the impression that it was like cell shaded. Well, cell shaded, but it's still... Yeah, cells, cell shading still is, a, is a form of computer graph, you know, graphics, but that's that's how it seemed to me. Because of the the thick outlines, it looked like they were everything was cell shaded, and then they put they like black inked, outlines. they inked over it, yeah, for the stills. Yeah, and it it was a little distracting to me, but as I got involved in, you know, the the characters' goofy antics, I didn't notice it as much. I did like the the overly dramatic flyover where when they walk into the school, it like flies down the halls and shows the student council room and like spins around it nine different times. Yeah, what. Like I a, a, was bunch weird. Of, a bunch of action anime do that when there's like this big battle set piece it the camera like flies around it but it's actually but in this show it's just like a box with nothing but like black walls around it because nothing else exists in this show they didn't bother to render oh, it that's interesting they didn't bother to render it so they're just 
they're just taking the piss out of shows that do that. Uh, that's that's interesting that they might have done that as a as a like to kind of say this is where the show is going to be taking place. Like nothing exists, as you said, or nothing matters outside of this room. Yeah, uh, I didn't uh, make that make that connection on like a, a directorial level that there would be some sort of comment being made there. Well, that's um, that's that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. How, what did you? What rating did you give it out of nine? Survey says uh, five. All right, I put it second. Oh, okay. So that's three. Oh, okay. So I, I so I know what your first is, or do I? I don't know. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we talk about what we what we rated first? I mean, what did you, what did you put first out of nine? Mob Psycho One Hundred, part two, part two. Yeah, uh, same here. Electric Boogaloo. It was really good. It was really, really good. It was, yeah. and the the reason I liked it in particular is because it's back to the version of Mob Psycho that I like the best. Like when we when we talked about it last year, um, your favorite act is like the first act before it goes into yeah the monster of the week show. Uh, I don't know if I would call it monster of the week because all of the all the villains they face. You know they're they're all kind of in in one location as you know Mob and his friends are moving through um, that facility. I I can't claw claw's base right. and they're moving like they have a goal in mind. So I wouldn't call it Ma- Monster of the Week, but it's certainly like extremely combat heavy and combat focused. Um, but it's the it's like the school life segments and him like uh, you know working for Reagan and. Getting paid some broccoli seeds yeah. <laughs> and a plant that tastes terrible. Right. I w- I was, yeah. Those those are my those are my favorite parts. I I like when this the everything is the spotlight is on Mob as a as a person as a character, rather than just like the show kind of moving him through uh, the fact that he can blow uh, things up. Yeah, and just like pushing him through the story. That, that's not my favorite. So the fact that this one was, you know, back to the the kind of stuff I want to see, I particularly like that. Okay. Uh, why do you think the plant tasted so, the, the tomatoes tasted so bad? I kind of felt that it was because Mob um, made them grow so quickly. Like the implication was that if you don't give them the time they need to grow, then they're going to taste like that. Or if they don't like absorb the nutrients from the soil or something. Well, for them to grow, they must have absorbed the correct amount of nutrients from the soil for him to have accelerated that process. Or he, they could just be growing like psychic energy could be replacing it. Oh, interesting. That might make sense because one of my theories about this episode was that it was kind of setting up an inner conflict that mob is going to have to deal with. Um, like when he, when he overwrites that, uh, that spirits control over the, the over vines, the plants. The plants. Yeah. yeah. He's essentially bending uh, organisms to his will, uh, and he and he thinks to himself, "I wonder, like, I, wonder I wonder if I can do this too." Yeah. Um. And he's kind of hesitant about it. I feel so. One of the I think that a place where Mob might go this season is his ability to control other people, like if if he has that ability. Um. Because he's always he's always kept his psychic powers to himself, and this is the first time that he's kind of not right. Yeah, towards and the end, I think he kind of um, devalues his his psychic abilities, uh, and he he wants to improve himself apart from them. But if he's going to start embracing them more and more, as it seems he will, because he's revealed he's revealed them to what's her face, then. Um, he may start becoming like a more and more powerful psychic and he, he may be tempted to manipulate others um, like on a, like for real, like actually manipulate them. And I, I, I'm interested to see if that like pops up and if it, like ultimately he'll reject. Right. If, if his, if his journey this season is, you know, the, obviously a lot of what mob has to do with is the internal struggle that mob has because he has the, you know, percentage towards explosion at all times. Right. He wants to improve himself. He has a hard time expressing himself. He 
you know, he seems to be very anxious and he, he suffers with like control. He's, he can't really control his emotions properly. And he's met, and he mentioned in this episode that he wants to, you know, just care more about himself and what he wants. Right. Which he is, which is a desire that he's probably sublimated in the past because he lets people take advantage of him. Um, like Reagan and I don't know, others. Do you think he knows Reagan's taking care of him or taking advantage of him? I don't know. I, or is mob still naive? I, I got the sense from this episode more than ever that he knows. And he, he, in fact, he even hears from the plant. You're like, this guy seems pretty ordinary when that plant spirit at the beginning, uh, he makes reference to the fact that Reagan is like, I, I've got no energy coming from this one. So I, I'd say, I'd say it's likely that, that mob knows that Reagan is, and he, he seems to be like very agreeable when his shisho tells him, you know, mob, and he dramatically points somewhere, go, you know, exercise that spirit. Blow this up. Yeah. He, he kind of go, he goes along with it with the air of someone who is just like, all right, who, yeah, kind of, yeah. Like you just rolled your eyes kind of like, you know realizing the other, the other person needs your help even if you don't totally feel like it or they don't really deserve it. Yeah, it's possible that he knows Reagan's taking him for a ride. But I, he he's also the kind of person who wants to be helpful. I was about to say, it's also possible that he's going along with him because he knows that that he, he wants to be able to use his psychic powers for good and exercising spirits can be can be a good thing. But he wouldn't have the you know the skills in order to you know, create like a business network and reach out to people and be like, hey, do you need help exercising things? Because he gets up and tries to do a public address and yeah, stands there open mouth for five minutes straight. Yeah, I was, that actually made me like really feel for him. I mean, it was funny, but I felt, I felt really, really bad the for him. The crowd faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, and did you, there were more instances of that sort of like, um, artistic shortcut i guess the reference to the 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 style of the original manga by one right um there are a couple times where his where mob's face is the original drawing which yeah. is significantly worse uh well i wouldn't say worse i, I don't significantly different yeah more more basic or rudimentary perhaps and when uh uh amy the the girl that he was going home with for the week tells her friends to go away so that he can it's like you guys go on home because he's gonna stay with Mob after he, like, brings the paper back together. Yeah, that's my favorite scene. Of the or, episode. or af as they start picking the paper up, and their faces are just like these grotesque, like, what face? Not JPEG. Yeah, that I mean that happened a lot last season too, and I think that's something we talked about was that the the author of the manga doesn't seem to have a very high view of people in general. I um, mean, he he prefers to focus on their their selfishness and their negativity and like the, the aspects of, of them that are lacking. Yeah. Like they're making fun of this girl who's supposed to be their friend and ripping up her paper. And right. Uh, that is, that is really, really awful. I mean, the trick that they play on mob, you know, that's obviously not very nice. Um, but what they, what they do to her is arguably worse because they, I mean, either they don't have a sense at all that she is passionate about writing, like from the way she hesitantly, kind of plays it off or they just don't care. Yeah. Either they, they don't know. So they don't know her very well or they don't care. Uh, which e both aren't great. Yeah. Either, either way, that's awful. Um, but you know, mob, mob to the rescue. He's a, he's a, he's a good, a good dude. Brings back all the papers. Yeah. I love that scene so much. I love the music, the strings, the, the time of day when it's set, like as the sun is setting, uh, is is really great because that's that kind of matches how Mob must be feeling after being told that it was all a big prank, um, and how the girl must be feeling. Ami or Amy, whatever you said her name was. It's it's it was spelled E M I, but it's pronounced oh, Emmy. Emmy, yeah, yeah. Um, she she must be feeling the same way. Uh, you know, kind of kind of sad and lost. So that's a perfect time of day to set it. The, you know, the animation is great with all the paper like swirling through the sky and coming back down. That's got to take so long. <laughs> it was a really, really great scene. It made me pretty emotional. Um, so I, you know, I, it's, it's the kind, it's the, it's the version of Mob Psycho that I really like and it was a, a, a good example of that version too. I thought it was really neat.
I liked how he was walking home with her every day and then going back to school for his club activities. Right. Like, why are you coming home? Yeah, he's uh, well, he's a dedicated guy. He's got to he's got to be a part of that body improvement club, man. <laughs> They're like, are you going to walk home with me today? And the body improvement club is like, hey, it's free exercise day. And just kicks him out the door. Yeah. They're they're uh, they're all top bros. Any oh you know what I wasn't looking at my notes this whole time. <laughs> he goes up to give the speech and the whole club is just like you can do it, Bob. Oh, I don't remember that. See, like, they start a, screaming out in the assembly. There's a ton of little little details that I would really benefit from, uh, you know, watching, watching it, it again. closer to. Well, yeah, and I, I I did watch it more than once, so. Yeah, well, it's it's certainly uh, worth worth that time if you if you like the series. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's move on. We got to keep it. So we keep it rolling. Both first, so let's do something else. Um, Kotobuki, I have written down here. What is the actual name of the series? Go ahead. Oops, sorry. Uh, you take it. Uh, we have dual monitors set up here, and we can only <sighs> scroll one of our word docs at a time. Koya no Kotobuki hiko hikotai. Is that right? I think so. It's the uh, the CG show about planes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, I mean, there are two shows about cute girls and planes this season. One of them is called Girly Air Force, and it is terrible. This one is a little better. I disagree with that, you know, for a lot of reasons. Did you have you seen Girly Air Force? No, I haven't. But this is really bad. Yeah, but dude, you should watch Girly Air Force if you think this is bad. All right, we'll have a bad off. <laughs> uh. It's almost sure. as bad as a sad off. That's okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> so what you think of the I, show? I didn't. I mean, it sounds like you thought it was terrible. I th- I just thought it was um, not very good. I haven't watched enough bad anime to be able to just be like, no, there's worse out there. This is like in the three worst I've ever seen. Damn, the second worst we've also watched. All right. Well, what 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 did you hate most about it? Let's start with that. Or just, you know, your your three least favorite things. Uh, the sound, the visuals, and the characters. Okay, so the sound. It's really interesting that you would say the sound because the I, th- I, th- I thought the sound design was the best part of it. I thought it was the absolute worst. There's no sense of space. The mixing was terrible. And I watched it on a pair of cheapo headphones. I watched it on a pair of studio monitors. Okay, well... The, w- I mean, would you deny that a lot of attention was paid to the sound design and there was like an attempt was made at... I think an attempt was made, <laughs> an attempt but it was, was made. not a good one. What? Well, okay. Do you have a lot of experience flying around in... What What era were those planes from? I know you're like a mechanically minded kind of guy. Those are like, like World War II, World War I planes. That's what I, fi- that's what I figured. Yeah. Um, and like the sound of metal creaking as you like make really sharp turns and the yeah. pinging sound that, that bullets would make as they go through the, the bodies of the planes. The problem the is that you're watching authentic. all of this from outside a plane. No, some, some of the shots were inside. Yes, but it, even it didn't matter whether the shot was in or outside of the plane. The sound effects were the same. So you're hearing, you're watching an outside scene of two planes chasing each other and one's shooting at the other. The gunshot sounds like it's right next to you. It has no sense of space. It doesn't sound like it's out in the air or anything, so it has like a lot of close reverb to it. And the sound of the bullet hitting through the plane is this close metal tang like you're sitting in the cockpit. While neither of those are true Did you for just the say shot, cockpad? Cockpit. I'll give you a cockpad. <laughs> <laughs> this show is a cockpad. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that it wasn't... Um... You know, it wasn't properly mixed based on where the camera was positioned in relation to the action. And sometimes, and you'd hear like these loud sound effects, and then you can't hear dialogue. Music's all of a sudden really quiet, and then the music and dialogue gets louder, and then it goes right back down because another gunshot goes off. Hmm. Like okay. this happened constantly. It was torture to watch through. Damn. Ouch. Uh, okay. Well, I didn't. Uh, I guess I wasn't. Um, Paying very close attention to that's not something you'd pay as much attention to as I will, though. Yeah, I guess. Okay, well, that that must have been uh, terribly distracting. It was. Okay, well, I I thought that the the 
well, I, I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't speak on the same level that you can about all this stuff. So I'll just uh, accept that it was not very well done. But you didn't like the characters either. I okay. Um, I th- I thought for a section they weren't they weren't great, but I thought for other parts they were fine. I mean, I I didn't think they were really good. I thought the way that they were introduced was. I said fine, misguided. Not good. I I thought the the setup like starting with the 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 dudes, you know, the two D animated guys who were like, oh yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> who didn't look that bad. Yeah, they they were fine. Yeah. The, like the one dude who was in the middle of a like a sexual dry spell, and he he was like, "I'm gonna go over there and talk to them lasses, I'm go talk to them ladies, and I'm gonna get my dick wet." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like to fly planes. <laughs> yeah, he, he sure does. Um, it was it was just a really bizarre choice to focus on them, like the dudes at the start, and then to only when he moves over to the table where the five female main characters are sitting. Do we learn anything about them? So it's like too late by that point because we we have to spend the majority of the episode in the dogfight. So we we all all I know about any of the female characters is that uh, one of them likes pancakes and one like of them really fluffy CG pancakes. <laughs> Eight hundred and fifty calories are just worth of pancakes, resistant to gravity and inertia and and all uh, physics of of any kind. They looked like cardboard, but I bet you they tasted good. No, they did not look like cardboard. They look like computer graphics. I mean, they. I mean, they didn't like move. Like they were stiff, like cardboard. Right. Uh, I think cardboard has a has more more dynamic flex motion than those, than those, those pancakes. Those pancakes. Did. But I bet they were delicious. Did you see, Did you see her spreading the butter around? Yeah, <laughs> and, and, it, and it, she's moving it, it around, but it's like it's it wasn't the same, melting. It's or, not melting. Yeah. It's the same brick. <laughs> so, so yeah, the girls are all CG. The guys are two D. The guys were two D, except for in one instance. One of the guys really? is sitting across from them from the table and just does this with his beer mug. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. It's just like, it's like an, it's like an early nineties animatronic from like a Walt Disney ride that has no sense of motion to it. Yeah. Uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> and it's sad because the guy who directed this also did Shiro Bako and girls in Panzer. You can believe that. Those are good though. Yeah, but the like the CG in Girls Who and Panzer, despite not being great, was at least reserved for appropriate moments. In this one, like the, I don't think it looks, I don't think it actually looks ugly. Um, I just don't think it's very fitting. And maybe it's just because I'm used to CG getting crammed in all over the place. I know what ugly CG looks like because I've seen the first and second seasons of Ruby. Okay, I have, I have not. It's, uh, yeah. So was this better or worse? Much better. Okay, well, that's good at least. Um, I mean, I, I feel like the reason the, those characters are CG in particular is because they're the main characters that are going to be on screen more, and it's an animation shortcut, you know. Uh, I also didn't like, I didn't like the dogfight at all. But besides the sound, I think visually it was... Dude, think, I think vis- so much better than Girly Air Force. Dude, watch Girly I Air think, Force. You'll want to blow your brains out. I think it was I think it was bland, and I think the worst part was that none of the planes seemed like they had any weight. I understand planes are flying, they're not supposed to have that much weight, but they didn't feel oh, they, they do have they do have weight. They I know, weigh something. They didn't no feel what. like they were like they were turning or straining when you can hear like the you can hear the, the sound creaking, yeah. of the creaking, but the plane looks like it's just, you know, nothing wrong with it. Right. Well, compare that to, and I know this is the worst comparison you can make, but compare that to the air combat from Dunkirk, and the way that that looks, and the way that it yeah, sa- the way that it not, sounds and feels. You're not going to get cinematography like that from a, a an anime TV series. There was one part though of the whole dogfight that was good. That was really good, and it was when after after the whole thing's over, and the main character whose name I have no idea what it is chases after the one that gets away right when they're like diving through the clouds and the camera is positioned like right outside the cockpit sitting on the wing and that it's shaking like there's you just love shaky cam there's a visual shake to it 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 gives the impression that there's a camera sitting there and it's being buffeted by the wind because they're moving so quickly yeah like it gives it gives the sensation of speed which the rest of the fight completely lacked also, who builds an airship that can only be attacked by the air and doesn't give it a flak cannon? 
I mean, I don't know. I don't know when this is set. This is some sort of alternate universe. Black cannons existed in World War One. Okay, and these well, planes are more advanced than that because they were using like prop. Pl- they were using prop planes with like wooden wings back in World War One. It was old school. Well, yeah, I. It it definitely seemed a little a little strange uh, how easily they were attacked. Yeah, um, and it was resolved a little a little too easily. Like the, you know, all the dudes get wiped out. Yeah, and then, they're all then d- the girls are all like, "Oh man, they're all aces," you know. Yeah, they're all they're all the best. Why why did you? It's it's mentioned multiple times that all the guys are freelancers. Mm-hmm. Um, so why hire them if you have these girls on board? Hand and fodder. Still waste your money, I guess. All right, yeah, I I, I, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I didn't think it was as bad as bad as you say. So I, it was. There were at times where it was physically painful for me to watch. <laughs> like I, I struggled to get through this show. Well, I'm, I'm glad you made it out the other side. What did you rate it? I did have a favorite part though. What was your favorite part? The goose. Oh, the, the mascot. The captain. The, the captain. They referred to him as the captain. Yeah. Who's like a hybrid between a goose and a dodo. Yeah. I thought that was That's hilarious. Part. Okay. Well, at least there was a little bright spot in there for you. Yeah. I put it. Uh, what did I? What did I put it? Seventh, perhaps sixth. No, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Fifth. It tied for dead last. It tied for a ninth for me, so you can put it as eight. That would be a tie for eighth. If there are nine series and there's a tie at last place, they would okay. both be eighth. Well, then Dimension High School and that both got dead last. Okay. So we'll average it out here. Definitely not going to be uh, something we talk Five. about in the future. Yep. Wow, you must have hated some of these other shows. I, I, I thought there was potential for the second episode to be pretty good because it was clear given the way that it wound down, that it was going to be more about like their life on this, in, in this, in, in this, this city, town. like the frontier kind of like a futuristic frontier town almost. I thought that was kind of a cool idea and a cool setting. And the characters might reveal themselves to be more than just like anime babes. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think they probably will. I, maybe it's just my bias knowing the, about the director's past work. And if you look through his filmography, it hasn't all been gold, but you know, I, I think he he might turn things around. I I do think that the premiere wasn't like totally well structured because of how it focused on like literal cannon fodder, like you said at the start. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, but we won't be continuing on with it. How about uh, the Promised Neverland? The Promised Neverland. I have a feeling you didn't like this one very much. Oh. Huh. Well, I, we'll we'll find out once we're done we're done talking about it. Okay. How how'd you like it? I really liked it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, this is this is based on a very popular manga um, running in Shonen Jump right now that I think is going to be concluding pretty soon. So if you really really liked it, if you want more and you don't want to wait like week to week, you can just go on Manga Dex or or just Google you know Promise Neverland or Yakusoku no Neverland manga and you can read it. And apparently it's you know like pretty successful and pretty good even for something running in Shonen Jump. That's a pretty high bar. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's not the lowest. That's that's, that's true. Those are light novels. Uh, there's I, there's there must be even worse than that that I don't even that I don't even know about. All right. So you you what did you what did you most appreciate or enjoy about it? I liked the twist. Yeah, I mean the twist is the big the, the big, big thing. thing, and and then how it. How it shifts. I mean, you have you obviously have an idea that you know something's up. I mean, that, that's really obvious. Don't go past the fence. There's a big gate. It's got weird gears in it. Everyone's got a number on their neck. They're taking tests. Like something's yeah. obviously weird. But I didn't expect it to be that weird. Yeah. I mean, I think we can just say the word. You know, monsters or aliens. They they are spoiler alert on a human meat farm. Yeah. That is their purpose. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really it's weird. It's really weird. I I guess you could say it's freaky. Um, I I actually was not that freaked out watching the episode, and a lot of people have reported that they were like, "Oh my god, <laughs> my mind was blown." I don't think my mind was like blown, but I was definitely taken aback. Yeah, 
I, uh, I kind of was, but I don't know. Like I was discussing this show with somebody else earlier and I can't really put my finger on it, but I, I did not get that into it. Um, I mean, I thought there were a lot of neat, neat things about it. The idea, the very idea, the premise of the show is creative, I suppose, uh, could be considered unsettling. I kind of like the character designs. I like the, um, the characters all kind of have squished faces and like some of their noses are really prominent. They all seem to kind of have an individual flavor to them, even though I have to assume that only a few of the characters will get any sort of meaningful development or attention or survive. Yeah. Some of them, I'm going to assume a lot of deaths. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I think if it's, I think if it's starting off with a six year old being murdered, put into a tank and then being like, hey, by the way, yeah, they it was they, just like a truck, right? They, no, they drop her into like a blue liquid. Oh yeah, tank. that that tank, yeah, that like cylinder. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's fair to say there's going to be a lot of deaths. Hmm. I mean, I I guess you're probably right, but I really like the design of the monsters. It was weird. Yeah. Like it was, they were like the super long fingernails and and, and like toenails. the 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 eyes stacked vertically. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Like that yes, was, you have uh, in SpongeBob. <laughs> the guy, the pickles, Mister Flats guy. Well, sure, Mister Flats, yeah, but also the oh, I'm I'm totally wrong. Yeah, it's not the pickles guy. Yeah, uh, it's it's the guy from boating school. <laughs> you gonna beat the me bully. up after class? Yeah, he's a flounder. I think that's why his eyes are like yeah. That. So yeah, you've you've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that setting. It's a little different. Uh, yeah, they're the designs are 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 pretty good. Yeah, I I like them. Um, they contribute to the you know that that feeling of unease. But yep. I like I don't know. By the time I got to the end of the episode, I I just thought to myself, yeah, it's a it's certainly a unique premise that for a lot of people will be attention grabbing and like hype building. Mm-hmm. But I. I was just like, I don't, I don't really care if any of these kids live or die. That's not my only intrigue, though. Okay, what, what else? What is the world like beyond that barrier? Is it similar right. to ours? Are there like weird alien structures? How does the so how like does an, the world an attack on work? Titan sort of appeal? A little. What's bit. outside the wall? Yeah, because the wall is like, oh, normal human kids. So outside are like, are humans enslaved? Do humans even exist anymore? Right. You know, like what's what's the world going to be like? Right, right. Or are they even going to be able to leave because the show literally jump scared me at the end with the, the with woman, like the with like the sh- the super sharp string stab after it was well, like this nice flowing piece and then it just like pops right into it. I was just like, "Oh, that was cheap." <laughs> but effective, but cheap. Yeah, the I the the main reason that I knew a twist was coming was first of all, this is an anime. Uh, I knew sec- there was. I knew there was all, a twist coming. The mother, yeah. I mean, you mentioned a lot of really good, um, you know, clues that you could have picked up on, but you didn't mention the mother and her like constant smiling and affection and devotion. That to me was the biggest giveaway. Like nobody is this good. Um, she didn't. She didn't seem to be characterized as a human being. Maybe I'm not that cynical. Oh, because I, I was just like, if someone runs an orphanage, they've. But they're probably pretty saintly. Yeah, but if someone runs an orphanage and they deal with so much shit that they they couldn't possibly be like that good or that untouched by um, just like weariness and uh, fatigue. I th- she was just too good. There, yeah, but there was a scene where she was away from all the other kids and she's just like looking at the drawings that yeah, but she's made smiling, on the wall. isn't she? I know, but like she serenely, like, she like takes off the wall and looks at her and like hugs it. Yeah, and, that that is ridiculous. Like, okay, yeah, that's a little weird, but no one was watching her like that. It, we it, were, um, yeah. Okay, that, that's a good point. Yeah, it it would have been really stupid and insulting if in that scene she had, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the camera tilts and she like rips up the paper and eats it. <laughs> that wouldn't have made any sense. <laughs> the blorgons are coming. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's possible that she really loves all the kids in her own strange way and is is acting like really, really cold and uh, differently when she's in the presence of the monsters because it's what she needs to do to survive and perhaps what she needs has to do in order to like keep the kids alive as long as possible so that she can get I don't them. think she's human. 
Okay. Well, that that was that's my actual theory is that she's she's not human, but just the way that she looked at that doll at the end where her eyes were like rotated weird and they were a, a different color and her face like almost morphed in shape. Yeah. Yeah. Was, she's not human. Which means which also leads me to ask are they going to leave the orphanage in the next episode or is it going to going to take them a while? Yeah, well, is, is life going to like immediately change and they won't be allowed to leave or something? I think it'll probably be more gradual than that. Although this is just going to be a 12 episode series for a manga that is much longer than that. Right. Anyways, I really liked it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Uh but I I mean, I, I recognize that it was pretty good, I should say, but I, I wasn't that I wasn't that into it. Okay. But we'll I mean we'll we'll see. Because it's, we're probably going to end up uh, watching this one. Okay. What did you, uh, how how'd you put it? Second. Okay, I did third. So I think we've probably got our, our three series locked in, and those would be uh, Mob Psycho, Neverland, and Kaguya. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how the last two do. Yeah. Let's talk about Rising of the Shield Hero. Is one that of, Tate? Yeah, Tate no Yusha, something, 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 something. Yeah, yeah. So you did you do you have it up? Yes, I do. Okay, I gotta scroll. I gotta scroll over to my. How how do you? This is this is one of the big popular, uh, of course, controversial <laughs> series of this season. How how do you how do you like it? Uh, the opening monologue made me want to slam my head into the keyboard. Of uh, what opening monologue was that? The opening monologue where he's like. So I'm an otaku, but I'm not really. Like I go outside and do other things, and like I save my brother from drugs. So like my parents give me money, and that means I don't actually need a job. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. As soon I as soon as that popped up on screen, I knew we were in for a hell of a time. <laughs> like this was this was gonna be a, a really deep and involving tale. I think I wrote down, it's like if SAO had a less believable plot. Uh, what do you mean? Rising of the Shield Hero is a, a timeless piece of fiction. My, it's my favorite. Yes. Yeah, it, it certainly didn't, didn't open very well, you know. But there, there are a lot of anime series that do that, you know. I'm just, your ordin I'm just your average ordinary person. And then one day, a magical girl fell out of the sky and started living at my house. And now I have to try desperately not to have sex with her because then the story would be over. A lot, a lot of anime series do that sort of thing, like the really simple kind of patronizing self-introduction from the main character. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Rising of the Shield Heroes in, in, uh, in, in bad company there. Yep, he reads a book. There are some legendary heroes. I hope that I hope, that girl looks like a bitch. She looks <laughs> she looks too slutty to be a princess. <laughs> this, this, what was that? He's 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 red pilled, dude. <laughs> Animated and red pilled. <laughs> uh, based and <in> shield pilled. <laughs> yeah, the 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 narration is terrible. Um the way he gets sucked into the alternate world is just like by reading a book is terrible. Um, I mean that that's what I seem to remember happening. Like, yeah, you know, the that, pages start start turning on their own with like magical wind, and then he. he there was wakes one kind of cool effect to it where it's he's like being pulled into another universe or whatever. So the world he's in kind of stretches out, like the bookcases all become really tall, like it's you know stretching, and he's gonna go somewhere I, else. I kind of remember thinking that, that was ugly. I thought it was kind of cool. Okay, well, points points for trying. Yeah. Um. Then they stop trying again. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? This is when they start to try really hard. Like all the the, the other three legendary heroes the, already know what's yeah. going on. They're all they're all chads, dude. The rest of their book had the pages filled in. <laughs> yeah, and they're all uh, you know, of course they're all like really cool and good looking and you know, athletic and they're all like mocking him and looking down on him. Like, "Oh, you're the shield hero." Uh, Wait, is that bad? You're the We all played video games, so we're cool. Wait, I didn't <laughs> play video games. Does that mean I'm not cool? Uh 
yeah, they, uh, it was kind of interesting that they were from other versions of earth or just other worlds, other no, like whatever. Yeah. Alternate realities, something like they that. weren't, they weren't all just, you know, like who's like the current, who's earth. the current prime minister and they all say something different. Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting idea, but of course nothing is going to really actually be done with it because yeah. it's all about the shield hero and how he has to get revenge on all all the on the chads just, all the chads and the stacy's of the world <laughs> <laughs> but not stacy's mom she's got it going on no well stacy's we haven't met stacy's mom yet uh apparently she's a real person because that that girl is like the princess the one who uh betrays him really she is i yeah i think from reading online i, I okay well that. I, I might be there's totally no wrong. indication in the show because he's not like um so my daughter will go with you or something it doesn't mention yeah. any of that so. i could i could actually be totally wrong about that i'm i have no basis for saying that other than i saw it on an enemy board so but Did i have slashes before and after it uh, i mean i can neither confirm nor deny that rule rule number one okay thanks fight club there's um there's really, there's just no subtlety to this entire, this entire story and this entire production. Like, oh, this beautiful, this beautiful woman who wants uh, all this money, and uh, <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this isn't gonna go poorly Dude, at all. I loved the part where she explains that society is a matriarchy, and that's why when a woman invites you up to your room, her room, you can't say no. Like you're required to go with her. Matriarch and red pill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like. In what? Appar okay, so apparently there's um, a king. Why wasn't there a queen? Yeah. Then? Well, apparent. I've I've read that the queen was out on business or something. Like she was out doing her queenly duties in another. In another. How many people are defending this? Being like, oh no, well, you just didn't have the whole story. Mil millions, dude. <laughs> millions. <laughs> there are millions of shield hero white knights. <laughs> but <laughs> millions of people are slaves to the matriarchy. They're. Uh, well, speaking of slaves, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I've gone so hardcore in this last day. I want some slaves now. Well, I mean, I didn't think it was all that bad. He, it's true that he's in like a really desperate and dark place. And so the only people who will be his companions are like literal, uh, you know, bottom tier Slave human owners. beings and, uh, and animal people, apparently demi humans, they call them. Oh, was that uh, was that what the sub said? Mm -hmm. Subtitles, okay. Yeah, well, except he, for the uh, he gets a cute demi-human uh, slave foo for his his inevitable harem. Let's be real, right? Let's, obviously, let's not delude ourselves into thinking that the majority of his uh, his companions won't be female because that's probably going to happen. At least he still has the blacksmith as a friend, right? Although that was kind of obvious. Yeah, I mean, you got to get your weapons and armor from somewhere. And you have to, you know, give most of them to the attractive woman who is uh, obviously a bitch and is like, uh, you know, going to flirt with you and then take your money and then and then hashtag me to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can just hear the author of this series like saying gamers rise up. What <laughs> through his story? What was so dumb to me is that he's he's like ah uh, just me doing my old tourist things and he's stashing away some silver coins and then right before he leaves he's like you can have it I was like bro you needed that <laughs> come on well he was he was just so right he was filled with righteous fury uh, and he just you know if she's gonna take some of his money then she might as well take all of it. I, I don't. I, don't I want know. someone to dub over when he's like accusing them and throwing things at them with like Alex Jones' voice going on a rant. <laughs> oh, many many memes will be created as a result of the show. Don't worry, because <laughs> there are you know there are people who love it. Of course, it's like a stupid power fantasy slash revenge tale, and then there are people who hate it for you know. I don't know. I suppose it's it's political and social implications. What is this in the bottom right hand corner of my field of view? Oh, that's your status. Oh, magic. Dude, yeah. <laughs> this is like a video game. That was I mean, honestly, the, the thing that was most offensive to me about this show was not uh, anything about like women being whores or owning slaves. It was that somebody thought I would like this. <laughs> somebody wrote this and then it was chosen 
out of all the you know the light novels and i love it was originally a web novel actually oh gosh um so just like text only not even cute anime designs i guess i don't know um but i mean (laughs) this is intended for like mass consumption this is beyond. And it's it's, this for, is it's beyond for gamers, dude. I play video games, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna like this because I play video games, and the guys in a video game, like the the thing comes up and says you can't equip a sword because you're you're a shield class. But that's like from a video game, bro. <laughs> it's like, bro, I just leveled up, <laughs> <laughs> level two, bro. Now I can change my shield into a leaf, then yeah. pick up plants, and now the plants are better. Yeah, video game mechanics, LMAO. Uh. It shows a. It's not very good. No, it's not even that well made either. At least I didn't find it to be because, and that was a shame because this is by Kinema Citrus, who have done some of my, well, I shouldn't say some, like one of my favorite anime in recent years, Made in Abyss. Uh, that show looked real, real good. This one. Was, not so much yeah i i didn't really think it looked very good at all actually there were so, a few instances of like kind of nice backgrounds but the moment when he like exits the city like the you know because it's a big walled city yeah and he goes out into the the plains you know the the tall grass for the first time they looked really bad yeah dude the, the camera like spins around like he's supposed to be uh suddenly struck by the beauty of this natural world and it just looks like smeared. <laughs> it, it looks totally disgusting. So there's there's one shot where he's sitting under a tree in grass. And I looked at the grass. And I was like, wait a second. That's the Photoshop grass tool. Yeah, well, uh, the but di- I mean, digital like, digitally created backgrounds are more and more popular. In anime. Like uh, Promised Neverland, for example, there was a lot of that. There but too. I mean, it's like it's like the stock you just bought Photoshop, and you're just like, I want grass. Hey, look, a grass <laughs> tool. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's becoming more and more prevalent. Honestly, it's a shame. Yeah, but I mean, the the thing about modern anime is that you 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 don't have to watch it. Like, you can always go back and watch cell animated stuff with like really beautiful everything. Uh, well, there's plenty of crappy looking cell anime, but backgrounds in particular are like almost always go back and painted. watch 08 ms team yeah that was a good looking show background backgrounds in in older anime look tend to look a lot nicer as for like animation quality not always yeah not always the case there's a lot more m- money flowing i think in anime now than there used to be but it's all spread out you know amongst 30 different shows um in a, in a three-month period right I did think that the uh, that their basic enemy design, like just the little orange blob with teeth, I thought it was kind of cool. It just reminded me of Dragon Quest, like the blue slimes that are the basic monsters. So like the chews. It was just that. Yeah, I thought they sounded. I thought they sounded cool. What did they sound like? It was just like teeth sounds, right? Gnawing sounds. Was, yeah, that. But like whenever they got hit, it was like this. It was like kind of the whoosh of the air inside of them was along with like a kickball being hit or something like that. I, th- I don't know. I thought they were cool. I, I can kind of call that to but mind. But that's, that's, that was, that was that's it. That's the best part. <laughs> the best part. The, <laughs> level the one enemies. Orange balls. <laughs> yeah. Orange balls were the best part of Rising of the Shield Hero. And don't forget at the end, Cat Girl. Right. The slave. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be sticking around to find out what, what her deal is. So what did you... How how do you find um, Tate no Yusha no whatever to be out of nine? Seventh, since I had two eighth places. Right, right, okay. Um, yeah, dude, I thought Kotobuki was better than this. This was embarrassing, but whatever. Uh, guess how I titled uh, Kotobuki, by the way? Goose. Oh, okay, yeah. It's because uh, the, the thing I remembered was, hey, there's a goose. <laughs> so th- I'm I'm sensing a pattern here. You like the goose most in the the airplane show, and you like the little the little orange ball, little orange guys in uh, in this show. So then, was your favorite character in Castlevania um, the ghouls? Were there any? Yeah, like the little bat. No, just the bats. Was your favorite character one of the thousands of bats on screen? No, my favorite character doesn't show up till later. Oh, okay. Yes, you have seen this. We're going to talk about Castlevania now. So, turbo nerds can leave. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is, but this the thing about Castlevania is that it's not a winter 2019 thing. Like season two came out last year, months months ago, towards the end of 2018. Um, but I mean, I'm down to I'm down to watch it and talk about it. So your favorite character doesn't show up till later. I know you. I mean, seen, he he shows up, but it's like for 30 seconds. What at the very end? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh one of the one of the Belmonts. Yes. Which you know because. The, the dudes who are discussing goat sex at the bar um, yes. say something like, we should have killed all the Belmonts. And he goes, shit. <laughs> so he must be a Belmont, I guess. I don't, I don't know. He, oh, I mean, if okay. you know anything about Castlevania, you know who the Belmonts are. I've never played are. a Castlevania game. Really? It's true. I haven't even played Smash Ultimate, which has, you know, Simon and Richter in it. The Game Boy Advance Castlevania games and the DS ones, those are fantastic side-scrollers. Yeah, I know. I know they've uh, they got a they got a big reputation. It's a it's a huge franchise. Metroidvania. It's its own genre. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm not a big video game person. That's fine. So. Anyways, um, as for this story, it was it was all right. I wasn't I wasn't big into it. Okay. Same as the first time I tried to watch the first episode because this is this is my second attempt. Um, I mean, I you know I could I could see myself watching the rest, but. Not not that interested in, in doing so. Okay. Because we get this set up with, you know, Dracula, woman comes Lisa. in. A woman that's actually, like, brave enough to come into a house that is full of, that literally has hundreds of skeletons outside. And it's just like, can you teach me science, bro? Yeah. Which so is a little odd. The The fact that we're supposed to care so much that she kill, got killed and that Dracula's sad now is kind of strange given that we... She just, she's just like a, a vaguely sciencey, brave, and attractive person who we know for like, I don't know, a couple minutes. I don't think we're supposed to care too much. I think that those opening minutes are to give a background for the rest of the show. Well, I, this, this entire first episode is to give a background for the rest of the show, I think, because we meet the person who I assume is the main character at the very end. Yes. So this is, this is basically a prologue. It's more of an episode zero than an episode one from what I can understand, not having seen the rest. Right. And I've only seen the first four, so. Oh, you haven't seen season two? Nope, not at all. Okay, well. Um, I, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I, I do think that, like, visually, they put most of their effort into effects animation and not very much into character animation. So, so like, when Dracula comes down the first time on the the pillar of fire where his wife had just burned. Yeah, yeah. That looked amazing. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah, and the I mean his face shows up his, in the flames when his face out of the comes sky. out of the sky. It's Yeah. They had I mean I assume they had a team of animators working on that one cut and then but like the I already talked about the dudes who were discussing like animal fucking in the bar at the end. When you when they're like drinking from their their tankards and like turning their head to to talk to each other. It's like missing a frame somewhere. No, it's it's more like no sense of of uh I don't know. You you complained earlier about the planes not having any weight as they as they flew through the air in Kotobuki. And in this show, like there's no sense of mass to to those those dudes. Like when their necks turn, that no other part of their body is adjusting to compensate for the movement. I they just seem to be like it's almost like they were animated in flash with like, you know the little tool that lets you manipulate existing lines rather than new frames being drawn. It just right. doesn't look very good at all. And I mean, that problem extends to some other, some other scenes. Um, but yeah, all the, all the stuff with the, you know, the demons, those, that's actually some, like some animation, like some, some limbs. Right. And just movement. And that, that, that looks pretty good, but that's the one, you know, and the raining of the blood and like smoke and, and the town fire. being slaughtered. Yeah. All, all that looks great. But for them to emphasize that over the way the characters move, that's that's kind of, I mean, it ties into the episode being so, uh, you know, centered on Vlad's revenge. But I didn't really get a sense of who anybody was or other than that, that one priest guy is like, you know, a real dick. Right. The bishop. I didn't get a lot of personality from from the characters. Okay. What did you think of the the voice work since it's all, you know, Americans? I mean, uh, you can you can get the Japanese version with English subs 
on did you watch songs. it in japanese no but i i i think i might because some of the english like um what's her face lisa like you know how when she's approaching the castle and she's like <gasps> and she's the, she's trying too hard to emulate the stuff the japanese voice actors do yeah but it makes sense for for japanese people to do it because that's like they literally make those weird noises in conversation like eh oh oh they they do that stuff when they're talking to one another that's not real that's, yes it is that's real that's why it's reflected in their in their animated television series but when she does it it's like when she's like gasping at every little thing i don't even really i think she was just directed to do it i i don't yeah know I, that I, it was a, I definitely think it was direction that it was i don't think it was because like no one naturally thinks to you've looked at a door <gasps> yeah i i don't know even even though when she's being put to death, when she's being burned at the stake, the, there are there are a couple little weird breathy noises she makes, like Ugh! <laughs> it just made me like giggle as I was watching a woman being slaughtered. Well, for no there's reason. one of those might be because when you're burned at the stake like that, you don't die from the fire; you asphyxiate. You can't breathe. I don't. So you're gasping for breath. I don't know if it was a gasp. I mean, may, well, it might have been tried to be one. That's I don't giving. Know. That's giving. Uh, you know the the voice directors a, too much credit a lot of credit yeah but it's you know that's possible it's an interesting point to make um what do you think of the music i honestly could not i don't remember okay i don't that's, remember i, I don't think remember. it i mean were there a lot of strings and just like you know mm -mm. no really there's a lot of synth really there's a lot of synth with a some choir and a little bit of string and horns, but it was a, a lot of synth in it, honestly. I, which dude, I thought was, I, I watched it like probably an hour and a half ago, and I, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't leave a mark on me at all. Like mentally, I thought it was one an odd choice, but then I thought maybe it's a callback to the, the games, the the original. This is based on Castlevania, the original game that came out for the NES in the eighties, right. Which was all like an eight bit, like MIDI synthesized soundtrack. Sure. I'd actually be really interested to see if anyone's done like a comparison between some of the tracks from the original game and the show and I'm see sure that, if there's like an overlap somewhere. Yeah, I, I would would bet a lot of money that that sort of video exists like on YouTube or something. Because this was a Netflix series, so a lot of eyes were attracted to it. Plus, from a super popular, recognizable franchise. It was um, actually like, pretty heavily advertised by Netflix too. When you, if you sit, like if you have a smart TV and it sits on the Netflix channel for too long, like without you watching something, it goes into a screensaver mode. And one of the ones that's on the screensaver is Castlevania. Hmm. Like out of all the shows they could put on there, it's on there. Don't you think that it might sense your preferences? That's, uh, yeah, okay, never That's mind. probably why it popped up. It did. Anyways, uh, I, I like I liked the show. Um, I think... But this is the this is this studio's first project as well. Okay. Um, which is just an animation studio in Texas. And there aren't many animation studio or any like animation studios that do this style in America. I think it's, I thought uh, it looked somewhat similar to, you know, the Justice League Unlimited sort of stuff. You know, a lot of that's not animated in America, right? Uh, Justice League Unlimited. I didn't. I didn't know that. I mean, I know a lot of most animated of the, series. Most of those are South Korean and Korean. I know. Yeah. I mean, I I know a lot of animated series uh, that air in America are are produced elsewhere. At the very least, they're in between elsewhere, if not animated completely by, um, you know, people from Asia. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't know that about uh, Justice League, but I I I don't know. I I just kind of get the sense from most American animation that is in this style. Um that it's it's not quite getting the the feeling it's not it's it's not quite giving me a feeling from its from its characters that I'm that I'm looking for in terms of like the way they move and the just the general angles from from which they're shot and the way things are framed Castlevania has its own look which I think is I mean honestly that's better um but I thought it was I thought it took some inspiration from Helsing because the first time I watched it, I hadn't seen Helsing. Dude, this this now looks I have. nothing like Helsing. Helsing has like really I meant a mostly, lot of close ups and really thick line work. I think I, I meant once you get to the city where the city is like being burned, um, I think it 
takes a lot of like color palette and other sort of influences from it. Oh yeah, because everything's on fire. <laughs> everything's I, I, I guess I realize now it's a pretty flimsy comparison. There's vampires in both. I don't. I don't think they and a they teleporting look, castle. I don't think they look very similar. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. I could see myself watching the rest of it. I'm, not, yeah. It's all right. Cool. Any, you have oh. any any other? Uh, oh yeah. Who was the who was the dude who tried to convince Dracula? That was Alucard, right? Who tried to convince Dracula not to kill the humans? I believe so, but I'm not positive. Because I mean, that's he's kind of glowing, you know. So and Alucard is like a like a demi human. He's like only only half human. So he's probably got some kind of aura <laughs> around he, him. He, or he shows up later. Okay. Spoilers. Um, yeah, but I mean, obviously, his attempt to stay Dracula's hand was not effective because no, he it, he does uh, carry out the revenge that he promised, kills the entire city, and then tells everyone to go kill everyone in every other city. Yeah, um, he he used the same. What was what was the name of the city? It was like Walla Walla something. You ever you ever? Written I, down I have written down here. Okay. Uh, where's my mouse? Check it out. Because he used the same name for the city that they attacked, and then so I, I feel as though it's supposed to be Wallachia or Wallachia is the name of the city, and then there was there was a word before it which was like Taku something. And that was on Taco, but it was like Takuyashi or something. Um, it just which, seemed which to me was that like he used... the province that that city was set in, and okay. then he listed off all the different cities. Yeah, I remember that. In that place. I couldn't understand a single one of those. Like the crackling of flames was too. There was, was there, too there loud. were flames and moving demons and blood raining from the sky. Yeah, it was a little muddied. Yeah, but I'm. I mean, we just watch it in Japanese next time with subtitles. <laughs> I honestly, then you can understand everything. I honestly might try it. All right, where where, where did you rank this one out of nine? Third, uh, I guess. Yes, I put a third. I put it sixth. So that's going to get... I, it, my pen stopped working, but that would be an average of four and a half. Okay. So that's not going to make the cut. That's going to be in the middle of the pack in fifth place. Series that we will be we will be going forward with are Mob Psycho 100, The Promised Neverland, and Kaguya-sama wants to be confessed to, which I think is a pretty... Uh, I'm glad that's in there. Decent mix. Those are actually my top three. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> well, how was Mob not going to be my top as well? Like it'd be difficult for something to outshine it. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty good. Um, it's a so, shame we're not doing Dimension High School. Well, I mean, you're welcome to watch it every week. <laughs> no. I might watch the second episode just to see if it's as funny. Just funny because it's bad, or yeah. I mean, it made me it made me giggle. You know, it made me laugh as I was watching. So my favorite is during the OP when they all walk out and do like the weird, like one yeah, of them the crosses their hands and puts their shoulders back. The other like does like finger guns at the camera. Right, and and then the camera swivels around them, uh, but they blink. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, <laughs> it's 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 supposed to be like they're frozen in time, but they're blinking like multiple times. They did the whole thing in one take. They just no cuts. Don't worry about mess ups. We'll fix it in post. And then they forgot. <laughs> we'll fix it in VR. They, they got drunk and forgot. All right, we're are we done? Uh, yeah, I think we're done. Um, however, there is a fourth show we're doing. Yeah, uh, Bacano, because that's the uh the old show, oldish show we're doing. Right. I I made a little video on the channel a couple of weeks ago to let people know that we were going to be back, and I. I made mention of the fact that Bacchano was the quote unquote classic series. That oh, we okay. Picked. Cool. Because we, you know, we did do that in the past. If anybody's listening and is new to Anime Podcast, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. And we'll see you next week with more anime.